Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. Well, hey, friends, welcome back to another episode of The Therapy Show. In this podcast, we dive deep into the world of healing, transformation, and the power of nature. And that is why I am so excited for you to hear from my guest today. Pedro is back for another conversation about plant medicine and healing. But before I dive into this intro about Pedro, I wanted to tell you that I have some fantastic news to share with you all. I am thrilled to announce my latest project called Guided Meditations and Hypnosis Podcast, and it's a special series dedicated to guided meditations and hypnosis. And guess what, y'all? It is 100% free. So what's in it for you? You'll get guided meditations for all levels, hypnosis sessions for deeper mental wellness, and a variety of techniques, including visualization and breath work. So why guided meditations and hypnosis? Well, they're super convenient. You can listen anytime, anywhere. They aid in personal growth and mental clarity. They're 100% free, mental wellness for everyone, and they help reprogram your beliefs and your thoughts to help you live your best life. So to get started, just click the link in the show notes. You'll sign up, then you can dive into the very first episode, and I'd love it if you would share the love with your friends and let your family know about it too. Your path to tranquility is just a play button away. I can't wait for you all to listen and join in this beautiful journey. Today, I am thrilled to welcome back Pedro, a knowledgeable and experienced guide in the realm of plant medicine. In our previous conversation, Pedro has shared incredible insights into his journey and the transformative potential of working with plant medicines, and this episode promises to be just as captivating. In today's discussion, we focus on the intriguing intersection of plant medicine with addiction and personal growth, and Pedro shares compelling stories from his practice, shedding light on how plant medicine can offer profound insights and catalyze significant changes in individuals grappling with addiction. Through his narrative, we explore the nuanced relationship between humans and these powerful natural allies, diving into the complexities of healing and the journey towards self-discovery. Whether you're familiar with the concept of plant medicine or new to the idea, this episode is packed with thought-provoking perspectives and heartwarming stories of transformation. Join us as we explore the depths of human resilience, the potential for healing, and the incredible wisdom that plants can offer to those ready to listen. So whether you're here out of curiosity, seeking knowledge, or in search of healing paths, this conversation with Pedro is bound to offer valuable insights and perhaps even inspire a new perspective on the journey of personal growth and recovery. I have to remind you that this episode and all of my episodes are for informational and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with your therapist or a professional for specific advice related to your situation. Okay, let's dive into the episode. Well, hey, Pedro, welcome back to the podcast. It's great to have you. Thanks, Lisa. It's good to be back. Yeah, I wanted to know, first off, anything new, exciting happening in your world since we last spoke? Uh, New and exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, or just new doesn't have to be exciting <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> uh, i mean a lot of the a lot of the same in terms of uh, the teaching work that i do and and the plant medicine work that i do um looking at a trip back to peru to work with my teachers and then uh, actually host, having my teachers come up here and doing some work with them across the country in the spring so that's that is exciting that's, that's cool really exciting. yeah Ooh, that sounds really cool and exciting um well i'm i'm happy for you i'm glad to know that you are still out there helping people and um working with plant medicine and having you back uh today has been something we've been talking about for a while because your episode your last episode got a lot of a lot of downloads a lot of uh great feedback so i'm so happy to have you back on the podcast. And today we wanted to really try to touch on three things, but probably just two things, which is plant medicine uh, in regards to addiction and then plant medicine in regards to grief and loss. So when we talk about plant medicine and addiction, where would you like to start with that? Uh, Yeah, I think, well, when we're talking about addiction, we're talking about relationships, Mm -hmm. Um, a person's relationship to whatever it is, they're in relation with this thing that you know that they're dependent upon and so if it's whether it's 
sex or alcohol or some other uh, you know object um what we're interested in is what are they really reaching for when they reach for that thing what are they really searching for you know when they are um after that um that experience and that answer is not simple (laughs) so it would be it would be very difficult you know for a person to come to a single plant medicine experience and think that uh, they can go on once and get everything resolved cleansed healed taken care of and that then they'll never be addicted to that substance or that thing again to be to be frank you know i i haven't had the privilege necessarily of working with people specifically around addiction I and mean, we all have our dependencies but i can't think of a single person who's come and said i'm working on this addiction and i need to heal it okay um, and but i have a lot of you know stories of people who um, who have their dependencies and get clear messages about how to handle those, you know, and the plants really give them the kind of activation energy and the clarity to, to go about and, and bring themselves in better relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, So we can talk about some of those and we can also talk about some, maybe some, uh, some sort of messier experiences that people have had trying to work through addiction because it's such a long haul, yeah. such a long haul. It is because of the complexity and the layers and you know how how a lot of these addictions are are founded in our in our formative years in our childhood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So would you say that when somebody comes to you, they're not necess- they're not like you said they're not necessarily coming to you because they have an addiction issue, but they have something that's keeping them stuck. And that's, that's when they come to you. How do you know if they have an addiction? Like, do you assess for that? Or how does that come up in the, in the process of, you know, discovery with this, with this, I guess we'll call them client. Um, yeah, uh, we have a long talk, probably at least, uh, about two hour discussion where I ask them why they're coming, uh, and what their particular intentions are if they sit down in ceremony with me. Uh, we also talk about, um, you know, past experience if they've got it with the plants and and other things. But uh, so they they'll bring that up. They'll bring that to the table um, if they're if they're wondering about this particular relationship, this addiction that they're they're trying to handle. But uh, normally, people are coming with, let's say, childhood trauma is you know they're trying to heal some sort of deep traumatic moment, and they don't even think about their dependencies or addictions as paramount. But for sure, in part of that healing from trauma, the addiction gets pulled into the story at certain moments during the ceremony and gets worked on. So that's generally how those things how those things come up. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. I guess because I've heard from folks that are, you know, in addiction recovery, they're that they don't want to try plant medicine because they're worried about becoming addicted, you know, or they're told like, uh, my sponsor says, don't, don't do it. It's not, you know, they're worried about me becoming addicted to the plant medicine sort of thing, like that high or that experience will then become my new thing. I'm not ready for it yet. Um, so I was just wondering if anybody had, have you heard that from any of anybody that you've worked with? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, and there are some people I know who don't, for that reason, don't do plant medicine. I think that opens up a huge uh, that, that there's a, lots of stories um, that speak to that in different ways. Um, and as a small anecdote, I'll say that um, this is not a person I worked with, but a, a story I've heard um, of a friend who has done a lot of medicine work, and he's working with a gentleman who had been in AA for decades. Mm-hmm. And uh, after uh, after a week long ayahuasca, this was down in Peru, and after um, drinking ayahuasca. For a week in one of his ceremonies, he felt so burdened and he realized that what the burden that he was feeling was the burden of saying, I am an addict mm-hmm. of that, that, you know, critical admission and that weight that you need to carry when you enter AA. Mm-hmm. And it, it had served him, you know, when he had entered first entered, but he realized that it didn't serve him any, any longer. And he could let go of that. Um, Interesting. Now that's not everybody, but that was his story. Um, And 
Uh, at the same time, I have seen people who fall into the trap of replacing one sort of dependency with plant medicine. Um, I have a friend who he was he had a a, a rare a skin disorder, and it was pretty debilitating. Um, and he was he had seen many different healers and could not find any any healing really any major help and until he found ayahuasca and he actually moved into the jungle and he was drinking this plant three times a week for about 10 years so hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ceremonies trying to heal the skin disorder without any real uh, substantive progress and the people around him and he told this to me he said people around him later admitted that they saw what was going on mm-hmm. you know here is a guy who uh, really couldn't come to terms with the fact that this is a, this is a thing that he's been given in life and he has to walk with it this this illness um, and so really in this case what was he reaching for when he was reaching for a cup of ayahuasca it wasn't healing so much as it was resistance so, so much as it was sort of self-denial right. um, and and not coming to terms with with who he was even though part of who he was in this lifetime is some nasty nasty suffering right. uh, and so since then he he realized that lesson after many years and he's happily walked away from plant medicine and he does a lot of community-based healing work and he loves it mm. he's able to carry his sort of the suffering physical suffering with a lot more lightness okay wow yeah so this the plant medicine can it's different for everybody you know it's just what it, what it brings to light and what it shows you about yourself. It's on everybody's got a different timeline. Everybody's got a different process and everybody almost has like a different awareness, you know, to what, what's happening for them. So I find that fascinating really do. And it just goes to show that healing happens so differently for everybody, you know, it's yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll say that um, if we take a step back when I'm working, you know, People see this as a substance, and that's fundamentally not how I and a lot of other, uh, call a shaman, and also, we don't see it. It's not a substance. It's a relationship to another being. And so it's important for us to come to this plant on a regular basis, because it's like calling a grandmother once a week, you know, your wise grandmother once a month. Mm -hmm. And you would never say calling your grandmother once a month is is a codependent relationship um and so in that sense um that's not but that's that's a hard view to have and it's not one that in our western world is is prone to adopt um it's much easier for us to see this as an object that again we can abuse sure gets you thinking about how how we perceive objects and other things in this world, you know, I don't know, some deep thoughts there. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. Uh, and, and so, so again, for a little bit more context, like people who've never had this experience of really feeling connected to a plant and receiving wisdom and healing from it. And so they have this experience for the first time in their lives and then they go home, you know, let's say they do it at foreign country, they go home and the plan is still talking to them, you know, like they wake up in the morning and, and they feel like they're receiving information from this plant. And let's say they have a, they had a drinking problem and they find themselves now back in their home environment and they're in this uncomfortable environment and they feel the strength from the plant. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's in, it's of course they'll want to go and continue working with that plant, you know, and say hello to it a year from now or six months from now or a month from now because it's it's a friend it's a teacher and and they want to continue um that process of giving and receiving that relationship and like any relationship yes it can become abusive mm-hmm. and like the the friend that i mentioned who had been taking it multiple times uh, a week for for years right do you have any other um other stories or uh you know uh, scenarios that you can share with us about somebody who m- may have been struggling with an addiction and used plant medicine and things changed for them? 
Yeah, we can. <laughs> there's two different types. So when I was saying that uh, oftentimes you, if a person sits down to a ceremony, you're in ceremony for like six hours, a lot's going to come up, mm -hmm. you know, various scenes will come up throughout the day or night. And um, there are many people I've worked with who, who through the process of a night, you know, for maybe 10 minutes, it becomes very clear to them that they have to cut out tobacco or they have to cut out marijuana. Mm -hmm. And they go home and boy, they're on their best behavior for like two, three weeks, a month. And then everything falls apart and they're right back into their old habits. Mm -hmm. For sure that happens, you know? And, and I say that to emphasize that this is not, again, it's not uh, a silver bullet. Right. You know? It, yeah. And I mean, that happens when people are in rec recovery in AA, you know, it's like, it's just, it, it can happen to them too. It's for most people it there's a relapse, you know? Mm -hmm. So I get that. And um, we used to see that in law when I was working in addiction treatment, there, there would be relapses and, and it, and it happens. So they would relapse and then they would, would they then want to continue with the plant medicine or what did you see? Well, those types of uh, um, like overuse uh, or abuse of tobacco or marijuana, like those were smaller issues in their lives. And for that reason, they'd come up in sort of a smaller proportion to other things in their ceremonies. So those people had had seen really good progress in other areas of their life, but not with this particular, mm -hmm. not in this one, not in terms of their addiction. Um, so it was, you know, it was kind of a matter of what their energies and intentions really were for. They They knew they needed to change this, but in truth, they didn't really feel like it. Um, and because it wasn't eating them so mm -hmm. much, um, okay. like these other things were. But I'll, I'll talk about um, two separate people who had really similar experiences in terms of their uh, dependency on alcohol. And so these were both women and their kind of relationship to alcohol in their youth was you know, heavily abusive, like drinking to blackout and continue to drink and even into their you know their adult lives they would and it's like five o'clock you start drinking some would even be drinking while on the job um not in a totally irresponsible way but obviously drinking on the job is somewhat irresponsible mm -hmm. and um so after their first experiences of plant medicine uh, both these women had the very clear understanding that they could not touch alcohol and the way that uh, and it was such a visceral reaction that when or visceral understanding that when they came back or when they tried a sip of alcohol or even got near it there was an immediate physical reaction like they had to run to the bathroom to vomit I mean their body could not handle it and my understanding in those situations is that the you know, the plants were working on not just on the addiction, but on something much deeper. And that was the kind of that was the the self abandonment that happened when they drank alcohol and how from uh, maybe a very from their initial times, um, alcohol was a way to forget themselves and sort of uh, even destroy themselves in a kind of way. And so while the plants were working on these things and helping these these processes for growth and healing around trusting themselves and loving themselves, alcohol was anathema. Alcohol was absolutely toxic. Mm -hmm. And the bodies were perceiving it that way for the first time in their lives. And to this day, it's been well over a year for both of these women, and they still haven't touched alcohol, and they really don't have much um, much interest in it. And that's also not easy because friend groups, you know, how our friend groups typically so often revolve around alcohol, a lot of people's at least. So that's caused uh, fractures in relationships and letting go. And, and so the, you know, the process grows its tentacles, so to speak, but it's, it's really sweet to see. I want to share with you a fabulous offer from Therapy Notes. Have you ever felt swamped by endless paperwork and tangled schedules? Then step into a world of clarity with Therapy Notes. Hailed as the gold standard in electronic health records, 
Therapy Notes is your beacon in the dynamic realm of mental health care. With their around-the-clock seven-day live phone support, it's evident why they shine with a dazzling 4.9 out of five stars on Trustpilot.com and Google. From effortless billing to streamlined scheduling, precise note-taking, and state-of-the-art telehealth, Therapy Notes is your all-in-one solution. And for the prescribers out there, they're ecstatic to introduce ePrescribe. And if you're switching lanes from another EHR, they've got your back. They will seamlessly migrate your demographic data at zero cost, ensuring you hit the ground running. So become part of the 100,000 plus mental health professionals community who've chosen therapy notes. And to embark on a two-month complimentary journey, just tap the link in the show notes or use promo code LISA at checkout at therapynotes.com. That's promo code LISA, L-I-S-A, at checkout at therapynotes.com. So dive into the Therapy Notes experience today and see why it's the talk of the town. Navigate with confidence and choose the best. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I bet. That's, I. you know, you really, you you were able to get down to the core issue of why were they using the alcohol? What was it helping them cope with? And those feelings of, you said self-abandonment, is that right? Like they were, they were using alcohol to, to not feel that, to feel abandoned. Is that right? Or was there just say to not feel in general Yeah. um, because of, because of early, early trauma. Sure. Sure. And things happening in the body that, that they just shut down, that they, they divorced from. So, Um, so yeah, the, the medicine was bringing them back in relationship to this. Yeah. So I, I was just curious, like thinking about how you work with them and what was that process like? So they, they go through the, so you have like your pre-ceremony meeting and then you have your ceremony and then you follow up with them, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the follow-up sessions, like, what are those like? We generally do one, let's call it integration or application uh discussion whether it's with a group or one-on-one and then after that it's all every person is different i'm always available so people can text me whenever and it's interesting to see what how people come to me now some people feel like they're it's a bother uh, some but also some people are afraid to ask for help and a lot of what the medicine teaches is you're worthy of receiving help so uh in both of these women's cases, there was a lot of back and forth, and there still is, in terms of how they're doing and what they're going through and how difficult it is, because it's not just about the alcohol, but it's about that's about feeling again and and releasing so much pent up emotion and trusting themselves and and you know people who are afraid to feel are going to stimulate themselves at any cost, and so it's not just getting rid of alcohol from their lives, but it's the other ways that they basically pump their life full of distraction, whether that be something, you know, other substances like coffee, whether that be physical practices like exercise, excessive exercise. And so then what, uh, what the medicine's asking of them, what the plants are asking of them for healing is to kind of tear themselves down and tear the structures that they've built in their lives that have prevented them from actually feeling and trusting themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeesh. That's not, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not. And it, 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 that's a lot of work for, for so many people, you know, to go there. So. And, and thankfully they have therapists, you know, they, they have other help and not just me. And that's the best, that's the best scenario when you have various people who can help carry the burden of resolving this deep trauma, this long held trauma, a community should really help a person bear that, not just a single health professional sure. or a spouse. Yeah. Well, and that's, that was something that I was going to ask about too, was, you know, it almost sounds like the plant and, and, and I'm learning, cause I, I know I told you I'm learning about hypnotherapy and hypnosis and it's almost as if like, if someone's in therapy and they kind of hit a wall, you know, and they're just, they know something's keeping them stuck. They can't, their therapist, like they're kind of at like this impasse and they can't figure it out. Like that's when I would as a therapist be like, well, why don't we try EMDR or why don't we try hypnosis? But I never thought about saying, have you ever thought about plant medicine? Because these are the type of interventions that really can help you push through that stuckness or push through the, the wall of resistance or whatever you want to call it. Like we could call it a number of different things. So I find it fascinating that, you know, you could be, what you're doing is like a referral out. So go work with Pedro 
Let's find out where you're stuck. And then once you get there, bring it back into therapy and we can, we can do more work around that. Um, have you like, have you experienced that as like a referral from people? Yeah, a number of times. And I think what I would, this, the phrase that I would use for that stuckness is I would call it ego defense. Mm. Ooh, I like it. And, and we are so defended in this culture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, we have, are so control oriented. And I think the way that I see that is I, if I talk to people or people, you know, they, they know that I do this work and they go, oh, I would never, I, I would never, I'm too afraid to do that. I don't know what I would find out about myself. Yeah. which is to say they're so defended from the unconscious. They're so defended from these things that they've judged and keep kept repressed or, you know, swept under the rug. Um, and that's where the, that's where the stuckness lies, or that's the cause of the stuckness. So these plants have a way of bringing up from the unconscious what's been, what's, what's there. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, that's, that is, and that is, that takes a lot of bravery. To be willing to do that but that's the that's the price of freedom of of liberation yeah takes a village <laughs> you know you have all these different people that are in position to help and support as like a little village right of community of support but it, it takes a lot of being willing to be vulnerable and to let down your guard and trust and and uh and just try something different you know it's really interesting so much pain out there in the world so much pain and um, to, to add on to that mm -hmm. as part of that part of that trust and humility is saying yes i can accept help from a plant mm -hmm. yes I, a plant is a living thing that is a teacher that can heal me mm -hmm. and getting out of that echo chamber in which it's only humans that are going to help humans mm -hmm. or it's only other medications can help humans you know yes getting away from that whole business of i need a pill or i need the medication and i'm not saying that people don't need those things but i think uh, you know just pay attention to what's going on in the world and what what's what we're finding out about quote unquote the chemical imbalance in your brain and here take this pill for this chemical imbalance um it's it's not as a, it, it can do more harm than good for a lot of people, but we're so conditioned to think that this is the way this is, this is, this is what, this is how we're, this is how we fix ourselves. This is how we deal with these symptoms instead of like, maybe you just need to process through these feelings and, and these emotions um, instead of, you know, stuffing them or, or masking them with medication. I could go on. That's a whole other podcast probably. But it's true. It's true. I, yeah. I agree with that. I agree with that. And I, yeah. I do see a lot of that. There's, uh, there's a, a greater sense of empowerment that comes through this type of work than, than relying on a pill to, to mask symptoms, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know about you, but the longer I've been in this field and the longer I've done this work, um, I just, you know, I, I have more of a, like wanting to know more about these holistic approaches or alternative approaches which really they're natural approaches you know they're not they're not alternative they just just how things have evolved with our medical culture and uh western medicine this is where we are um and i know a lot of people agree with me but then a lot of people don't and um that's okay and i do think that there's definitely a time and a place for medication i'm not saying that i i don't think that but there's so many alternatives to healing that just do your your due diligence research as to what would make the most sense for you um as you're kind of maybe listening and you're wondering is this for me or not so i guess that is a good question is how would somebody know if this is it's time for them to give plant medicine a try um hmm. it, that's a big question it's kind of a weird question <laughs> i know i think i might know how you're going to answer it too but i'll let you answer it yeah, that is a that is a challenging question. I, it it is a big question. There's so many reasons that that people come. Um, desperation is a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the sense that there's there's not been any answers. Um, 
Well, ultimately, it's it's a kind of curiosity or something more than a curiosity. You know, it's a deep intuition that this is a meaningful path for them. And that intuition is probably also going to be mixed with not a small amount of fear. Mm. And I love that because that means it means something, this, okay. this pathway for them. It's, it would not be normal to come to this type of work and not be a little bit afraid yeah. or nervous. Sure. Um, even, even me, after all this time, I, I'll, I still come and get the butterflies before working with some of these plants. Um, because like we said, there's the unconscious holds so much um, and who knows what lives there. Yeah. Right. Okay. I like how you uh, answer that. Actually, you said you actually used the word desperation, you know, and I think that looks different for, for everybody, but also having that, uh, that not knowing the fear, but being kind of at wit's end with, I don't want to feel like this anymore. I'm tired of living my life like this. Things I've tried in the past haven't panned out for me, or I gave it the gold, good old college try and it just didn't, didn't work. But I also think that there's something to process there too, when somebody comes to you and they're in that desperation state, right? It's like, well, what have you tried? And I'm sure you have these conversations with them. What is that like when somebody comes to you like that? That's a good point. Uh, it is important that people, it's impossible for me to say that there's a right way or a wrong way to come to work with these plants. Mm -hmm. I came to it in the first first podcast we did, I tell my story and, and I came to it looking to get really high. So who am I to cast stones? You know, I live in a pretty big glass house when it comes to coming to this work. And that humbles me, you know, because there are times where I think well, that person just seems like they're out for a good time. Mm -hmm. I don't know their path. I don't know where they'll be five years from now, 25 years from now, next lifetime. So it's not for me to judge, but it is for me to help guide people and say, well, what have you tried? And how intentional are you about coming to this plant? And what medications are you on? You know, what's your lifestyle? Is this physically, cap are you physically capable to do this in a safe way? Um, so helping people reckon with whether it be contraindications of medicine or just the physical body load that it can take, or maybe they're not in a place uh, because of family life where it's, it's right for them at this time. So we talk about complicating fact um, because this path, once you start working with plants or if just one ceremony, it can bring up a lot. And if, you know, let's say you're a person who's you've, you're maybe your marriage is a little rocky and you're also taking care of your mother or your mother-in-law and you got three kids you might be desperate and at the same time, there might be way too much going on for you to meaningfully do the post ceremony work and stay open and change habit. There might be not enough energy mm -hmm. to make meaningful change from that ceremony. Right, yeah. What What do you recommend to somebody like that at that point? The trust, the trust that uh, things will, uh, that if they're really connected to the plants and they wanna do this work, then the time will present itself. Everything happens at the right time. Um, and we have a lot of responsibilities in this life. So um, yeah, simply that. And I'm always available. So call me when, when you think it's the time or just call me just to talk and check in. You know, it's, it's not, not normal. I haven't had many people uh, sort of in that situation, but I have had people in a situation where they've already started the work and they want to do it again but life right now is too chaotic. And so it's much easier in that case to say, trust, keep talking to the plant. You can you can talk to it every night, every day. You can ask for it for help during your work and it'll be there and open yourself to feeling that or meditate and call in the plant. Um, I know that must sound pretty woo to some people, mm -hmm. but that's the, that's the world we live in. Um, you know, you, you might call in, you might talk to your, your dead grandmother, your dead parent, uh, it's the same for plants, same for animals, same for these other spirits. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's like for some people's talking to God, you know. So, exactly. Yeah. It's just maybe asking your, you know, a higher power for, for some guidance and some help. And 
Um, sometimes you don't have to make a move, right? Sometimes you just have to sit in it and things happen around you and you can't control them, but you can, you can control how you're going to react and respond to them. So I think that's, uh, that's really helpful for sure. Okay. Well, I know that this is, we were going to talk about grief, but I'm thinking maybe we should save that for another episode. Um, come back and talk about plant medicine and grief. Cause I know that you have a lot to share on that as well. Yeah, sure. That sounds great. Uh, okay. I'd, I'd love to. Okay, great. Well, Pedro, thank you again for being here and for uh, sharing more about plant medicine. I really appreciate it. And we, uh, this, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, you can definitely head over to YouTube and uh, watch the video as well. But we have Pedro's identity, uh, what do you call it, hidden. So you'll just see me talking to an emblem <laughs> on the screen. But I appreciate you guys being here and hope you found this helpful. Thank you again, Pedro. Thank you, Lisa. And thanks to the listeners. Please note that the therapy show with Lisa Mustard is for informational and entertainment purposes only and not a substitute for professional medical or mental health advice. Always consult with your therapist, doctor, or physician before implementing any suggestions from the show. The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard is edited and engineered by Chelsea Weaver. If you're looking to start a podcast or ready to take the editing off of your plate, be sure to visit ChelseaWeaverPodcasting.com. Well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamuster.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank, Thank you. you.